In the last tutorial, we introduced simultaneous equations, linear, and uh, when we had a linear and a nonlinear. It's not always the case of it being a, a linear and a quadratic. It could be a linear and a circle, a cubic, a reciprocal. So we just say we have one linear and one nonlinear. That's an example of a linear. The powers only to the first power. This is nonlinear. We've got x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is equal to 9. You may look at trying to factor and tidy it up, but ultimately we can just solve this by a method of substitution. What I'm going to do is call this equation right here 1. Now equation 1 is going to be equal to uh, what x minus 3y equals 1. So I'm going to write this as x is equal to 3y plus 1 by making x the subject. Now equation 2, x squared plus 2xy plus y squared is equal to 9. I'm going to feed this one into the second equation. Now x squared, well x is 3y plus 1. So equation 2 becomes 3y plus 1 all squared plus 2xy. And I'm going to write it 2yx. Now x is 3y plus 1. I just think it looks nicer to have a y there instead of there. Doesn't matter though. And that's equal to 9. Expanding out, 9y squared plus 6y plus 1. Now expanding this one, plus 6y squared plus 2y plus y squared is equal to 9. Collecting all this up, 9y squared, 6y squared, and 1y uh, squared is just going to give me a total of 16y squared. 6y and 2y uh, is plus 8y. And then I've got 1 and a 9. So I'm going to drag it all over here and make it negative 8. And that equals 0. Now, we can divide this through by uh, 8. So we can have 2y squared plus y minus 1 is equal to 0. And this will factor. Uh, we can have 2y minus 1. And then it's going to be y plus 1. I'll let you factor that, but hopefully... Uh, looking at it, it should come up with that. So what we can see from here is that y is going to either equal positive one half or y would equal negative one. Now, now that we got the y's, we can put it straight back through the linear. Don't don't feed it back through this mess. Put it straight back into the linear. So if um, y is equal to one half, then put it back into here. x minus three halves is equal to one. So x, let's do it just here, x minus 3 halves is equal to 1. So x is going to equal 5 over 2 or 2 and a half. So that's your first solution. Now if x, if y is equal to negative 1, then what we need to do is find x. Well x minus 3y, and y is negative 1, says x plus 3 is equal to 1. So just putting in the, the negative 1 here, and all we need to do is subtract the 3. So x would equal negative 2. So they are your two solutions for x and y. Hence, them being the pairs of values x and y that satisfy that simultaneous equation. OK, let's look at another one very similar x plus 3y is equal to 16. x squared minus xy plus 2y squared is equal to 46. So equation 1, I'm going to make x the subject. x is equal to 16 minus 3y. Equation 2, we're going to substitute in this for x. So we're going to get x, well that's 16 minus 3y all squared minus xy. So I'm going to write minus y, x, either way round, plus 2y squared. And that's equal to 46. So we've got a lot of tidying up to do here. 16 squared is 256. Then we're going to have minus 48y, minus another 48y, which is minus uh, 96y, plus 9y squared minus 16y then we're going to have now what's that going to give me um just uh positive uh we're going to end up now with positive uh 3y squared 
and plus our 2y squared we had before is equal to 46. Subtracting the 46 from both sides, 2, 10. Then I've got 9y squared, 3y squared and 2y squared. That's going to give me a total of, what's that, 14y squared, so plus 14y squared. Then I've got minus 96y minus another uh, 16y. That's going to give me minus 100 and uh, 12y. Let's put that on there, 112y. Okay, so we've now got this scenario. And that's all equal to zero. So we've got this set equal to zero. And as you can probably see, that will divide out by 14. Okay. If we divide all of this by 14, we're going to end up now with, this will give us, what's that going to give us? Um, 15. So this part will give us 15. So let's do it over here. We're going to have, uh, if I divide this whole thing out by 14, uh, we'll have 15 plus y squared, and that's going to give me minus um, 8. That sounds about right. Minus 8 equals 0. So tidying up, we can write this as y squared, uh, minus 8y, isn't it? Uh, y squared minus 8y plus 15 is equal to 0. And you can see that I'll factor nicely y minus 3, and then y minus 5 is equal to 0. So y is equal to either 3 or y is equal to 5. If y is equal to 3, x plus 3, lots of 3, which is 9, is 16. So what we're going to end up with is x is equal to 7. When x is 5, then we put it back in here. Uh, so y is 5, and we can see that x is going to be 1. And they are your solutions. Put it back through the linear and solve for the other. So if we were asked to plot the coordinates, it'd be 7, 3 and 1, 5. OK, don't want that. Move that. OK, we're asked to solve these ones now. Now, this looks as if it's going to get a little messy. Ultimately, though, it shouldn't be too bad. And there are a few different ways you can look at this. Now, the way I'm going to look at it is uh, the following way. I'm going to rewrite this top one now as 2x squared minus y squared is going to equal uh, minus 7 is going to equal 0. Now, what we want to do is eliminate one of the x's or the y's. So on the bottom one, I'm going to, and I'll call that equation 1, I'm going to rewrite equation 2 as 3y. I'm going to add the 3y to both sides. Um, no, in fact, I'm going to make x a subject. I'm going to make x a subject on this one. So 2x is going to equal 3y minus 7. And then I'm going to divide through by the 2. x is going to equal 3y minus 7 all over 2. Now, this is where it gets quite um, quite tasty, because we're now going to insert this in to the uh, equation above. There's nothing, there, you can, I mean, you can make y the subject and feed it in if you want. What we're going to have is two lots of this thing squared. So we're going to end up with 3y minus 7 over 2 all squared minus y squared minus 7 is equal to naught. Now, just squaring this top out, we're going to have, and remember, squaring this is going to give us 4. Squaring that is going to give me 9y squared. And then we're going to have minus 42y. And then we're going to end up with plus 49. And then minus y squared minus 7 is equal to 0. So that will cancel off to a 2. And then we can multiply through the equation by the 2. So 9y squared minus 42y plus 49. Now multiplying through by 2, minus uh, 2y squared minus 14 is going to equal 0. OK? So now let's tidy all this up. 7y squared. Then we're going to have minus 42y. And then this is going to leave me with a total, what are we going to have, 34. OK, so that's going to be uh, 30, 49 minus, uh, sorry, 35. And that's equal to 0. This all divides by 7 now. So we're going to get y squared 
minus 6y plus 5. And that's going to factor nicely. We'll have, uh, sorry, it should equal 0. We'll have y minus 1 and y minus 5. And they're equal to 0. So we can see that y is 1 or y is 5. So if y equals 1 and y equals 5, substitute them into the linear. So now we're going to get 2x minus 3 plus 7 equals 0, taking y to be 1. So 2x minus 3y, y is 1, plus 7 is equal to 0. So 2x plus 4 is equal to 0. And then uh, 2x is equal to negative 4. And then x would equal negative 2. Now, if we took y to be equal to 5, then what we've got is 2x minus 15 plus 7 is equal to 0. And 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. And then x is going to equal positive 4. So if we pop that in, x is going to equal a total of positive 4. So x would equal 4. So your coordinates are 4, 5, negative 2, 1. And again, if you want to check those, put them back through and make sure they work. So if we put one into here, two lots of uh, so I put two in uh, minus two into there, two lots of minus two squared is going to give us eight minus one minus seven certainly equals zero. So that one stacks up. And then if you want to put this one in just to confirm that's correct, then we're going to have um, x squared. Well, x squared is sixteen times by two is thirty-two. Then we're going to have minus, uh, what are we going to have on that one? Minus uh, 25 minus 7 is equal to 0. And that 2 works. So just check them. Check them through the linear. Check them through there just to confirm that. OK. What about this one? This is really pushing it out a little. If we look at this, 4 to the 2x. Well, 4 is 2 squared to the 2x is equal to now 2 to the y minus 1. So what we've really got here is 2 to the 4x is equal to 2 to the y minus 1. Now, if we have the bases the same, which I've just manipulated the bases, then we can get rid of them. And we can say that 4x is equal to y, plus, uh, y minus 1. And we'll leave that there and call that equation 1. Let's now deal with this in the same way. 9 is 3 squared. 3 squared to the power of 4x is equal to 3 to the power of y plus 1. So from this we can see exactly the same. 8x is going to equal y plus 1. So from here we can just uh, line the two up. 4x is equal to y minus 1. And 8x is y plus 1. Again, you can do all manner of different things here. You can substitute in. What I'm going to do on this is simply uh, subtract downwards. If I subtract downwards, 8x minus 4x is 4x. y minus y disappears. And 1 minus minus 1 is going to give me 2. So x would equal, dividing both sides by 4, x would equal 1 half. Now all we've got to do is find the y. Well, if x is 1 half, that gives me 2. Add 1, y is going to equal to be 3. Now you can check those and see if they work. 4, if we think what we've got here, 4 to the uh, first power. And then we've got now, putting in 3 for y, 2 to the second power. 4 to the first power is 2 to the second power. If you put it in this one, 4, 4 lots of half is 2. So what we're going to end up now with is 9 to the power of 2 is the same as 3 to the power of 3, minus one, uh, 3 plus 1, which is 4. So these two are true. So it holds true for both. So there we go. That's the second tutorial. Uh, hopefully those answers are right. Um, and that gives you sort of some idea of what you can do with some harder examples.